Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the step 3, how to set up and scale the analog input. We will mainly introduce the hardware from EL3000 of back of analog input cards. As we know, we will use a different kinds of uh, transmitter or sensors, get the sensor signal as a process feedback signal. The common use the signals from sensors Basically, we will use 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamp. Or some cases, we will use 0 to 20 milliamp. Basically, the current or the voltage signal. To receive those signals, we will use analog cards. From back of card to select the one analog card to receive those signals, we can set up the terminals. These terminals, this hardware, we set up this area from the previous video. If you are selecting the analog card or building up the BOM list, you can go to the hardware catalog list or go to the back of website. For example, if we go to the infosys.backoff.com and select the few bus components under the EtherCAT terminals, so we will see the analog card catalog here. Regarding the analog inputs, they basically, they are under the 3000 series EL3000. And for the analog output, they are basically EL4000. The common use of the analog cards, basically, they are this area. This analog card, 12 bits, or this 16 bits analog card. Sometimes to measure the temperature, we may use PT100 sensors. We will read the RTD channels, so we would use this uh, EL32, this series. Most of case, we will select the analog card under this hierarchy. So you can download the catalog or read the detail under this folder. Under the back of project, if you try to select the analog card, we can click this terminal EK1200, that is the uh, eBus power supply. So we can right click, click this uh, add new items. And from this catalog hierarchy, we can select the analog card. It shows a name here, so it's very easy for us to have an old picture of all the analog cards, and we can select by your application. For example, in my project, I already selected the 3044. Let's go review. So this is 3044, that is a four channel analog input. That range that's a 0 to 20 milliamp. Some projects they prefer to use a 0 to 20 milliamp rather than 4 to 20 milliamp because for some brands and for some analog modules to implement the analog current inputs wire break this diagnosis so the 0 to 20 milliamp channel can connect the 4 to 20 milliamp signals so once this channel got a wire break so the channel signal will go to 0 rather than 4 so this is 0 to 20 milliamp can detect this uh, wire break. But some 4 to 20 milliamp current module already built in this uh, wire break diagnostic function. So it totally depends on which kind of cars you will select. To receive the voltage channel, we also could use this 3068. That is the A channel 0 to 10 volts. But in industry, most of the analog sensor, they are basically 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 20 milliamp. Another common use the analog card, that is a EL3174, is this card. This card has a four channels, and based on your application, you can select the voltage channel or the current channel. And this resolution, that is a 16 bits, is a high resolution card. So I will mainly introduce this uh, 3174. Since in my project, I already select this uh, 3044, that is a uh, current channel. I will add this uh, 3174 because this card can measure the voltage and the current channels. Okay, I'm going to select this. Okay, it add here. Let me rearrange and uh, rename those signal cards. Till here, we have uh, two analog cards. This is the, the pure current card, and this is the combination card. To use the analog card, we better go to the menu of the analog card. Basically, we need to figure out two things. One is how to wear the current or the voltage analog input channel. Second, what the full range 
of this channel. This full range means after this signal is connected to the analog channel, inside the analog channel there is an ADC. After the ADC transfer the analog signal to the digital signal, there is a full range of the digital signal. For example, for the back of analog cars, most of cases the full range that is a 327, 67. For the Siemens analog cars, the full range that is a 276, 48. Okay, firstly, let's go to the EL 3044. So from here we can search. So we are going to find out EL 3044. connection here. So we can see this hierarchy under this analog input terminals, they are 12 bits. And under this list and the connection, this 3044 connection, it shows how we can wear the channels. So we can see this is the first channel and these two terminals, they are used for the second channel. Third channel, this is the fourth channel. So this is the hardware diagram of this uh, 3044. Other cars, they are the similar idea. If we go to the 3042, so we will see this is the 42, the wiring diagram. Okay. And then for this 3044 analog card, what the full range of this analog card, then we go to the commissioning and go to find out the process data and the operation modes. And find out settings. Select presentation. So from here we can see this input signal, this table. This table is very important. For the analog voltage card, 10 volts, that means that is a 327, 67. And for the current card, for example, this 3044 card. The full range that is uh, from 0 to 20 milliamp. So the decimal, the full range that is uh, 327, 67. So that is uh, the decimal full range. Also, according to your application, you can also select this assigned integer or the next table unsigned integer. For this range, that's 0 is 0, and the full range that is uh, 327, 67. This value. This value is very important. We will use this value to scale our analog input. Okay, that is a EL3044, this 12-bit analog card. And then let's look at the detail of this 3174. This is also a common used analog card. Using this card is a little bit complex. So let's search this card. From here, let's search EL3174. Same thing, let's firstly go to the connection, check out the wiring. That is a EL3174. For this analog card, it has a four analog channels. For each channel, it can be used as a current or voltage channel, but the current and the voltage cannot be used at the same time. Another thing I would like to mention, that is uh, how to wear the current and the voltage channel. For the voltage channel, it's quite easy and uh, quite straight. So we can see this is the first channel and this is the second channel. It has a plus and a minus. So it's very clear. But if you are going to use the current channel, current sensor to connect this card, look at this area. This is very special. This is the 24 volts here. And the actual current inputs, they are at the right side. You will see there's no negative terminals for the negative. This comes up one topic, that is uh, the current two-wire and the four-wire method and that depends on the two-way or four-way sensors you are using. Let me use this diagram as an example. So in this diagram, the controller that is a CX9020, and 
The power for this controller, that is this module, they represent one module. This is the actual wire diagram, and this is the electric drawing diagram. So when this module connect with this CX9020, this power supply at the right side of this power supply, so inside this connector will be connect to this module, and the minus will connect to this connector. This is the internal connection when these two cars connect together. And the power for this module, that is this connector. You need to connect one 24 volt power supply, and then this power will be used to supply the power for all the terminal bus. And this power is supplied to this card. Those 24 volts come from this connector. Those 24 volts can be used as a power supply for the two wireways analog sensor. For example, go through this way. So the 24 volts go to the sensor, and then the current analog signal, that is this green line. This green line connect to this channel. For example, this channel one current channel, this sensor connect to this terminal. And this is the whole loop. Often in the electrical panel, we will add a fuse here. The power goes through the fuse and then go to the sensor because most of time the sensor work on site or work on somewhere. This fuse will protect the shortage. Okay, this is the two-way analog sensor, and this card typically is supplied this way. However, most of the case on site, the four-way sensor or three-way sensor are commonly used analog current sensor. Like this way, this four-way sensor, that means it has a two connector that is the power supply. You can supply 24 volts DC power to this analog sensor. And then for the current, it has a plus and a minus channel. The positive of this analog need to connect to the terminals of this module. The negative of this current channel need to be connect to the zero volts of the power supply of this system. This black line, this zero volts, is internally connect to this blue terminal. That blue terminal, that is the zero volts of the power supply from outside. And in most of the cases, the negative of this power supply also need to be connected to the negative of this current channel. They need to connect it together. So the key thing is uh, the positive of the current channel need to connect to this terminal. And for the full wire sensor, most of cases, this 24 volts supplied from this uh, card will not be used. This is the typical way for this car to connect with a two-wire sensor and a four-wire sensors. So that is the typical wiring method for this EL3174 card. And then let's go to the scale table. Go to the commissioning. Process data operation method. Process data and operation mode. Settings operation mode. So we go to the presentation under this hierarchy. As we can see, for the signed integer, the 10 volts and uh, 20 mini n, that full range of this uh, decimal, that is a uh, 327, 67. This value is a common used full range value for the back of analog cars. If you go down, we will see there is one explanation for this extended range it has a little bit special. When the signal channel gets 100%, that full range is no longer 327.67. Actually, it's a full range that is a 305.18 is this value. If you didn't mention this, if you select this uh, extended range by accident, you will find the scaled value will not have uh, the accurate results. To check out this extended range, we can go to here, data, steam, and uh, measurement ranges. And if we scroll down, this is very clear. Let's go to find out the 3174. Okay, it is here. So 
Inside this uh, 3174, it has a selection and named extended range. That means if you are going to use the diagnostic function of this channel, it's highly recommend you select this extended range because the actual range is this, showing the diagram is very clear. However, if you select this extended range, the actual full range for the scaling, that time this full range value, that is 30518, is no longer this value because this value, when we get this value, the actual voltage or current we will get, that is uh, this value. And when we read the current, we will go to here. If you select this extended range, when we get the full range, this full range actually that time the channel received 21.4 milliamp. The 20 milliamp, that value that is a 30518. If you select this latency range, that is our normal way. The full range for 20 milliamp, that is a 32767. Keep in mind this. Select different way, our full range on the decimal will not the same. I will also mention this when we talk about the hardware configuration of this analog card. To read the detail of this description, let's review. This page is under the Infosys backoff.com under this analog input terminals. It's showing here data stream and the measurement ranges. Let's go back to the backoff TwinCast 3 project. This is 3044, that is the current card. So if we go to the detail configuration of this card, let's double click this card. And then let's go to the settings. We will see this card is shown here. That is a full channel analog input. That is a zero to 20 mini N. For the different channel, we can select it is signed or unsigned here. And for different channel, you can select by your case. And for this card, as we discussed, when this channel received 20 mini N, the full range of the decimal, that is a 32767. Okay. This is quite straightforward. You select the different channel and select the sign all unsigned. And sometimes you may select the different filter if your channel has a noise. Okay. Then let's go to the 3174. Double click this 3174. And you will find, let's enable this setting. Okay. Here it will show some difference. Firstly, most of case, we will select this standard. Okay you can select activate or deactivate this uh, filter. The extended range we just discussed is here. So if we select this uh, latency range, this is a common setting. If we go back to the web page, if we select this uh, latency way, the full range that is uh, 32767, this is voltage. For the current, if we select this latency range, this 20 mini N, that is this, this value. This is our normal value here. However, if we select this extended range, this 20 mini N is this. And if you look at here, you will find by default, this channel is selected as this extended range. That's why some people, if this is the first time for him to use this channel card, because from his experience, all the channel by default, we are using the 32767. So if select this default, and actually that time, the full range is no longer 32767. The actual full range, that is a 30518, it is here. You must worry carefully about this selection. If I'm going to use the channel three, that is the analog channel. So for me, I will select this latency range and uh, I will select this zero to 10 volts. Set this uh, channel three as an analog input voltage channel input. 
and my full range that is a 0, 2, 3, 27, 67. Okay, and this a higher arrow and the lower arrow, if you put a mouse here, it automatically pop up this. If you get a higher range or lower range, it can generate the alarm. Okay, and let's go to the channel 4. For the channel 4, I will select this extended range. And under this extended range, I will select this. The analog 0 to 20 mini N. Extended range 0 to 20 mini N. And the lower arrow and the higher arrow. So if you leave the mouse here, it will suggest for this higher arrow for the 20 mini N we will set 32767. And for the lower arrow, we put a mouse here and it will set minus 305. Okay. And the last thing is this. For 0 to 20 mini N, that is the unsigned so i will select this unsigned okay this is for channel four let's quickly review for channel three that is the voltage channel and uh, we will select the latency channel this is also unsigned okay so it shows right it doesn't matter because once we click this uh, save so all the change we just did that's become the black the red means the value is no longer the same as the default okay that is a the 3174 hardware configuration take care about this extended range selection and the latency range selection and then let's set up a global tag list and set up the channel tag from the global variable list Let's firstly set up the global variable list. I will set up a global list that named IO. And from here, we can set up four tags for the analog input and the four tags for the analog output. Analog input spare 01 channel A to declare this tag as a physical channel, we will type in add. And this is the, the analog input. So that is a input. And for the analog channel, that is an integer. The reason why I named this, that's because currently we have a two analog cards. So for the first analog card, it has a four channel here. First one, I will name the zero one. That is the first analog card, and the channel will have a four. I will name it A, B, C, D. Okay, and for the second one, the analog input card, that is a spare zero two. It has a four channels here, so it also named zero two A, B, C, D. Okay, so I will quickly set up those tags. We can also write some comments here. So, term. Four. El thirty forty four, and this is used for term five. El thirty one seventy four. We declare eight tags for those channels. We won't connect all of them. I just pick two or three of them. Okay, let's compile and build first. So the system will generate the tag list inside the system. Okay, this is a variable or tags that actually need to connect with the hardware channels. So once we declare those tags, and then we go to, for example, go to the 3174. So we specially set the channel three and the channel four here. So if I'm going to connect the tag, connect to this physical channel. Let me show how can we do that. Select this value, double click. 
and click this link. I will flow this here. So this is the, the tags we just declared, and this is the, the channel that come from the 3174. I'm going to connect this AI Spare 02, the second analog card, the third channel. Okay, let me click this uh, link. This come from this value, this window. Okay, click this uh, link too. So let me select this AI Spare 02, the channel 3, that is the C. Click OK. Okay. So we finish this channel and let's go to the channel four. Click this link too. So you will find with this selection only I used the spare to C is a disappeared. That because uh, after we selected this, so only I used the tags will be shown here. Once we connect that, it will disappear. So this is very easy for us to connect. I use the tags. Okay, for this channel, we will select the spare 02 D channel, A, B, C, D, the fourth one. Click the OK. So after this, this third three and the four physically connect with this channel tag. They are this. So we can mark here. So that is the, the EL, the channel three. And this channel is a 0 to 10 volt. And this is a, the channel 4. And this is a 0 to 20 mini amp. And this is the extended. OK, which means it's full range that is a 0 to 305, 18. And this full range, this is a zero to three twenty-seven sixty-seven. Keep in mind this: we select this extended range, so this full range is this. If reveal here, that full range is this because we select this extended range. Okay. Also, we need to create another two tags. That two tags will be used to receive the scaled value from these two physical channels. So I will create another global tag. I will name this a global variable. And from here, we will name it R analog input one. And this is a, a real value because this is a float and R R analog 2 so they are real value because this is our internal value so when we declare this we no longer need this uh, AT input because only tax labeled with this AT input it can be connect to the channel. If the variable declared as this, they will be used as an internal tag. Let's go to this channel. If I double click this value, click this link too. So we will see that two tags we just declared, they will not show up here because they are not going to connect with the physical channel. Okay. And then our main mail, that is a how to program the analog scale. Let's go to the program PID underscore code. This program will be called by this cyclic task. That cyclic task, that is a 100 milliseconds cyclic time. Okay, under this program, we can program that two channels, the scale code. Firstly, we will program the first channel. That is uh, the GVL dot R channel one. The first channel equal to since the analog channel that is an integer. So we need to transfer this uh, integer to real first. 
integer underscore to rail. And our channel that is IO dot the AI spare zero two C. So if I flow this, so this spare to C that is the voltage channel. Since this a uh, voltage channel, that full range that is a uh, zero to three twenty seven sixty seven. So we will do this way. Convert to a rail and then over the range that is a uh, three twenty seven sixty seven. This is the high range and the low range. Even if this low range is zero, I will prefer to program here. So you know, this is a scaling, right? And after this, we will time the actual range we will get. For example, from this zero to 10 volts, what the actual unit, what the actual full range you want to convert. If that is a water level, that is a zero to 10 meter, right? So. 0 to 10 meter, okay, that is uh, this range, okay. And if that is uh, 0 to 100, if you try to scale uh, 100%, so that's times to 100%. And because here it already ratio, and this is the full range after this ratio. And in my case, because this is the analog channel, it measures 0 to 10 volts. I'm going to use this channel to connect one battery. That battery is a 9 volt used battery. So I'm going to use this channel to measure that. And because my measurement unit, that is a voltage, we do not need to change to meter or temperature or percent. That is a voltage direct. So that's why I can use the 0 to 10 direct. Okay, so I leave a 10 here. And uh, I can program some comments here. This is the first channel. And second channel, gvl.input2 equal to same thing, integer to real. And the channel is IO dot the fourth channel that is zero two D. Okay. So this time this is full scale that is um three zero five eighteen. That is the full scale. If we review this channel. So we can copy this as a comments. Because we select this uh, extended range, so its full scale is this. So we program here. So we write the comments here. And measure uh, 0 to 20 mini amp. We will transfer this channel to a 0 to 100% value. Okay, so this is the range. Okay, after this, we will time 100. Transfer to a percent value, 0 to 100. Okay, so we time 100 here. So that is uh, this two channels analog input scale. All right, after this program, let's compile. Okay, so that is the analog input. For the PID feedback, one of these channels can be connected to the PID feedback. That is the actual process value. This value is after scaled by this uh, equation.
So this is a typical programming way to scale the analog input. That is a, a short video to show the online test when I used one actual controller. So the code is a slightly different with our just programmed, but the basic idea, they are the same. So this 2C, this channel will receive the analog voltage signal. We will scale this voltage channel to a zero to 10 volts, that unit that is a volt. I will connect one battery, that battery that is a nine volt battery because that is a used battery. So the voltage is slightly lower than nine volt. So we will see the result showing here. And this area, that is uh, the current input. I will discuss this uh, in the next video because in the next video, I will use this analog current output to give a result and connect this uh, current output to this uh, analog current input. So ideally, we should see if I give the same value, let's say 70%, so this analog input should receive that 70%. This is the unscale, this is a scale. So this current input and output, I will discuss this area in the next video. So I will go online and connect this used battery. We will see the voltage measuring here. To download the program, we need to click this green login button. So it will log in and download the program, okay? After we click this login, so the system will download the program and then go online. And let's watch this line. That is an analog input one. It should be converted to a voltage value here. So this is the raw data, direct coming from the analog input channel. I'm gonna connect that uh, battery. Watch here. Okay, it measures and uh, converted to 8.9 volts. I disconnect it. Okay, that is a 8.9. That means this analog voltage channel and this scaling method that is working. In next video, I will discuss this area. That is a current analog output, and this is a current analog input. All right, that is the TwinKai 3 back off analog input scaling. As we know, the analog input always is important feedback for the PID controller. That's why this video is a little bit longer than before. All right, that is this video, analog input. See you in next video, analog output. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.